so hi everyone today we'll be discussing about what are multi agent reinforcement learning algorithms basically that are dependent upon q learning so let's get started so we will be first of all understanding what are multi agent environments and what are different types of player we can get so if you have played games like contra pubg nfs there are three types of player that you can come across one is an actual player like you and me who are actually playing the game second are npc that are non player characters so these player these characteristics are not handled by any human so they are getting controlled by the computer and they are part of the storyline that are not competing with you like for example if you consider gta vice city so if you have played that you must have seen random guys walking on the road some person driving the car and all so these are part of the storyline but they are not competing with you and they are getting controlled by some computer logic that are called as non player characters the third type is bots so basically bots are again getting handled by computer only there is no human being behind them but they are competing against you so in pubg you must have heard uh, the player saying okay you have killed a bot so basically these are the players who are competing with the actual players but are getting controlled by the human so even in any of the game when you do a versus computer mode on in that case bots are coming for you depending upon the difficulty level that you have set up so basically there is a com like uh, people get usually get confused between npc and bots so the only difference is that npcs are not competing with the actual player but bots are now moving ahead uh, how the algorithms for these npcs and bots are getting developed so basically for a low end game mostly they would be using some formula for the like for example uh, first press uh, first hit on the right then hit on the left then hit on bottom just giving a very random example it can be a computer completely computer algorithm but at high end games like a modern warfare uh, gta games that you are playing uh, in that cases there is some ai agents some ai is used that is a reinforcement learning basically that are getting used to train these npcs and bots so multi agent reinforcement learning can find its implementation in such cases to train npcs and bots right so we will be, uh, we will be walking through different algorithms but first of all we will try to understand what is a major challenge that we might face when we are dealing with a multi agent reinforcement learning algorithm as compared to a single agent that we have been discussing so far so an action taken by the other agent like for example if a bot shoots starts like uh, the points a gun at you the action taken by an agent will affect the action of other agents as well right so it is not that like for example uh, the uh, environment that we have discussed before it was just the single person's action that is changing the state but in this case uh, any action taken by some other agent also will change the state and it will affect your action also so before moving ahead you need to understand what are dqns uh, so i am skipping that because i have already covered it uh, quite extensively in my blogs and uh, videos also so you can go to my channel watch it so the first algorithm that we will be discussing is independent q learning that is iql so if you think uh, what can be the baseline approach when we have multiple agents is to train multiple algorithms right like for example in case of one agent if you were training one dqn now in case of multiple agents we can train multiple dqns right what is the issue and in most of the cases it can handle that also because if you are having just one or two players coming like for example a game of chess where just two players are getting involved you can have two dqns for the two players uh, it would work completely fine but in cases where we have multiple foreign agents coming in multi many npcs are present like for example gta vice city uh, or so you won't be able to train separate dqns for each of the element right for each of the npc or the bot uh, you need to have some scalable solution for that also uh, in this particular approach that is independent q learning we are missing out on one important note is that we are not considering the actions that can be taken by uh, the other agent so like if you are considering this dqn if you remember dqn i gave you a one liner so we input the current state and eventually we are trying to figure out the ql for the actions that the agent can take now this particular state is considering the other agents to be stationary like they won't be doing anything so somehow we need to incorporate their strategy also in this particular dqn thing also we need to use a scalable number of dqns like for example if you are having thousands of npcs coming in you are not going to deploy thousands of dqns right so we need to have a scalable number of dqns as well so another baseline idea that can come up now is that uh, alongside the state that i feed into the dqn now we can feed the actions of other agents also so there would be two inputs so if you look in a traditional dqn what happens we are inputting the current state and we are getting qle for all the actions now in the updated dqn for uh, multi agent reinforcement learning that is mal 
actions of other players plus the current state is getting fed to the VQN and we are getting the QLE for all the actions for the current agent. Right? This is an update that we can do. Now again, it can have a few implications. One is that if the number of NPCs is very big, the input dimension can be huge. Right? For example, if you're having uh, thousands of soldiers in some war game, and if like for example the action of each soldier is represented by a vector of four elements then you can have the input size of 4000 the elements for actions uh, actions from other agents only now this is pretty big also like for example if you wish to add a new npc to the game now you need to retrain the model because the input dimension has changed right you need to tweak it you need to tweak the architecture so the next uh, algorithm that we will be discussing is the nearest neighbor q learning so the nearest neighbor Q-learning takes is almost a data copy of KNN that we have discussed that we already know that is the K nearest neighbors that you must be knowing where we are assuming that a current an agent in a reinforcement learning like for example just we will go with an example uh, assume that you are playing PUBG right and in PUBG you land up at Pochinki for example now just think that uh, why would you be affected by the actions taken by a player in hospital or school right you would be getting affected by the action taken by the player in Pochinki the opponents so basically the idea of nearest neighbor Q learning is that instead of considering the actions of all the players we should be considering the action of only the nearest K neighbors right now this K can be tunable right that depends upon the game and that depends upon the developer also but the whole idea is that as you saw that uh, we need to somehow keep the size uh, of the action vector that we're trying to feed to the updated DQN constant. Uh, in that case, we would be considering just n number of neighbors irrespective of the total opponents present, right? So even if there are hundreds of watts present, depending upon K, we would be feeding the actions of just potential K neighbors and nothing else to the DQN to predict the Q value for the current agent. This can help in maintaining the size of the input as I told you earlier also. And it is also considering actions from the different, uh, the most influential neighbors also. Next, we will be discussing on what is mean field Q learning. So in some games, like uh, when we are discussing on nearest neighbors Q learning, uh, we might need to consider all the bots and not just a few K neighbors, right? It can be the case or K can be very big. Like for example, uh, in a war game, it can be the case that your, your closest neighbors are like 50 or 100, 100 opponent soldiers. So you need to consider all of them, right? So in that cases, like in cases where we can have a very big K or we need to consider actions by all the NPCs or bots. In that case, mean field queue learning can be a great solution. So in this case, what happens is that we go with a baseline assumption that all other age, all the other agents present in the environment behave in the same average way, right? Like for example, if you take, if, if a war is going on and if, if it considers, consists of just soldiers, so the basic behavior of all the soldiers would be the same like for example if there is a king compared to all the soldiers i am assuming that his behavior might be different but on a usual note if it is all soldiers if the agents are almost similar in nature in that case their behavior would also be similar so in this case what we would be doing is that instead of feeding the actions of the nearest neighbor nearest k neighbors directly what we would be doing is that we would be somehow calculating a single mean action vector for all the agents all the neighboring agents and then feeding just one vector one action vector uh, representing the action for all the agents so what we would be doing is that converting the actions by different agents that are uh, different neighboring agents into vectors adding these vectors and normalizing this added vector such that all the elements add up to one now we would be feeding this uh, normalized single action vector to the dqn alongside the state so uh, this is all for today we